call the member for Ballina. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I rise um, as the lead spokes uh, for the Greens on this issue. Our agriculture spokesperson in the other place, uh, Sue Higginson, MLC, is a dry rice farmer, and she recused herself from this uh, with our, in our party room, um, rightly so, because she obviously has a vested interest. Um, I'd also like to thank Minister Moriarty, who's here um, in the chamber, um, and, and her staff in particular uh, for their very deep um, briefings and ongoing briefings with me and their hard work on this, on this uh, legislation. Mr Speaker, um, I think it's the tone um, I was pleased to hear from the Leader of the Nationals as well and the Member for Lismore um, and indeed Minister Wan, um, that there, it, it's, it is it's not nothing. There's a generosity of spirit, I think, from the rice growing community across the state, and particularly I look forward to hearing from the member for Murray, um, that, they, that they, it, is, it is a long tradition, that single desk since the 1920s, um, and there has been a generosity of spirit, and this is directly benefiting the rice growers in my electorate and in the Northern Rivers. Mr Speaker, Sorry, yes, it is, Mr. Speaker. Now, sorry, Mr. Speaker. Um, I do want to give a big shout out to all our primary food producers across the state, including all the small to medium farmers um, and all our rice growers, and and of course, um, you know, the the dry land rice growers are particular. Um, I'm particularly fond of, and I'll explain why later. Um, Mr Speaker, we can't do without our food farming communities and they work bloody hard to provide us with the basics of life. And when I hear people commenting about biosecurity, I heard some people today saying, why do we care that much about biosecurity? And it's like, yeah, city slickers, they don't understand where their food comes from and they don't understand how, how, much, how hard it is for farmers today. Um, I'm proud to be in a political party and as the former ag agriculture spokesperson, we are the first political party to introduce regenerative agriculture as a formal policy. I know that there's lots of farmers in this place um, and people who are very fond of regen ag concepts. It's kind of like this secret when we were at Agquip years ago, there was like, people would sidle up to us um, and and you know were a bit like didn't want to be tarred with the greens for 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 supporting Regen Ag, but they all are doing it. So um, because we know that healthy soil and seeds, preparing for warmer and warmer climates, and economic viability and sustainability for farmers are essential for food growing. It's not rocket science. I believe that this bill today contributes to those aims um, and it does support my, our, our local rice growers. To be able to, um, as the member for Murray and I discussed the other day, you know, these are a, new, a kind of new generation boutique farming and that's what's incredibly exciting in my electorate. Um, and, uh, and this, it's in keeping with that. And, and whilst, and we're also very, very, um, supportive and, and concerned that to make sure um, that the rest of the rice farming community, um, that the money, any money that's left over goes back to them and is used at their discretion. And I believe that this legislation does that. We do not, I'll flag, we do not support the um, Liberal National Amendment. Um, we actually trust that the Minister will be directly negotiating with um, the farmers themselves on the re whatever money is left over. Mr Speaker, um, we know that the, the formal review uh, that the former government undertook of rice vesting in 2021, before the previous rice vesting term expired on the 30th of June 2022, highlighted several issues and made findings that warranted further investigation. As such, the Australian Bureau of Agriculture and Resource Economic and Sciences, known as, as the ABES, which the member for Lismore's mentioned, was commissioned to prepare an independent report to consider the findings of the 2021 vesting review, um, and conduct further consultation with stakeholders and provide recommendations to the government on the most appropriate response to the 2021 review. The ABARES independent report largely reaffirmed the key findings of the 2021 review and provided eight recommendations for industry reform, including recommendations relating to the immediate removal of the Northern Rivers region and subsequent removal of the vesting arrangements entirely uh, improve governance and transparency and research and development. 
The consistently clear message from Northern Rivers growers is that vesting, which unnecessarily restricts rice grown in our region from being viably exported, is a key barrier to further industry investment, denying the industry the economies of scale it needs to compete effectively in both the domestic and export markets. Um, it is a matter more broadly, uh, but for, for our farmers, this was explicit. A finding of this report is that observed, that, that observed export price premiums are not the result of market power, but from a differentiated product approach that is based on branding strategy, targeted niche markets, and providing year-round product to customers. Um, Mr Speaker, in a deregulated market, there is little chance that the New South Wales rice industry would resort to a larger number of independent supply chain, chains or a Californian-style industry where there are three large corporate players. There is consistent evidence that there are significant, significant opportunities for industry development and innovation, particularly at the small to medium business, uh, small to medium sized farms that are currently being constrained under the current regulatory framework. A key conclusion of the analysis is that rather than a deregulated industry devolving into many competitive businesses, the existing supply chain is likely to largely continue as is due to its size and marketing position. So we do not believe that the, the sky will fall as a result of this. Mr Speaker, um, I do want to put on the record in particular um, a shout out for, rice, for, for the dry rice farmers because we know that that system reduces gas, greenhouse gas emissions by up to 85%. So in terms of re, coming back to regenerative agriculture, um, you know, and, and it's not a criticism, I believe it's, it's something that we will look at, but rice grown in the traditional paddy system has been found to be responsible for up to 18% of the world's methane, methane greenhouse gas emissions. So the dry rice farmers, what they're doing is a really unique and it's, and it's incredibly environmentally po and positive farming technique and it's estimated to reduce water use by up to 65% as compared to traditional growing methods. That's um, not the reason um, that we're here today, but it certainly is worth, for me, uh, putting on the Hansard that that is a huge benefit to dry rice farming. Um, and, and it is something that now, uh, you know, once this bill is through, that the, our Northern Rivers farmers can really go, go for it. Um, on the international stage, which is always so exciting. Um, as I say, Mr Speaker, we want to thank all of the um, stakeholders that have reached out to us. Um, it is a matter, we believe, for in terms of the um, end of rice vesting, um, it is up to the rest of the rice farming community to decide what happens um, in terms of the any monies, the monies that, are, that will be left over um, once the single desk is wound up. And um, we support the bill and we, we wish all of our rice growers and farmers well.